ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, a look at the work one Colorado ranch is doing to remain sustainable. Plus, how thinking outside the box is helping one West Virginia operation be successful in the cattle industry. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping this week's cattle industry news, NCBA is urging the U.S. House of Representatives to pass a complete 2012 farm bill before the existing bill expires on September 30th. The Senate passed its version of the bill in June. The House version of the bill has not been taken to the floor for a vote. With a severe drought, locking in the farm bill before it expires is crucial in order to get relief programs for those affected by the drought or other natural disasters. And with Congress being in recess for the rest of the month, getting that done will take swift action once they resume. Vice President of Government Affairs for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, Colin Woodall, says that getting the bill finalized is a top priority. When you look at the status of the Farm Bill, we have passed a full Senate version. The House Agriculture Committee has passed their version. Now the question is, when will we get a final bill? With the drought situation across the country right now, that has a lot of people asking for quick action to ensure that we can put the disaster relief programs back in place because right now they are non-existent. So there's going to be a lot of push over the month of August to try to get this bill worked out so that way when they come back in September, they can pass a final bill before it expires on September 30th. So we're going to help work on that because we would like to see this bill also be completed because it's got some great things in there for cattle producers. NCBA producer leaders believe getting the bill finalized is critical, not only for the beef industry, but the entire agricultural community. Here are some of their thoughts on why getting this accomplished is so important. Do you have everything in the farm bill you want? I don't know that you ever have everything in the farm bill that you want. We have some things in the farm bill that we are very, very uh, supportive of. Uh, number one, we want to make sure that the conservation programs remain intact. Uh, you know, for years we've heard people telling the, telling the producers that they've got to conserve water, conserve soil. And, and the EQIP program, for example, is one way that the government steps up and says, we want you to do it and we'll even step up and help you financially. And we've been able to keep that language in. We've also got language in which will help uh, ensure funding for research, which will help agriculture to continue to advance. So that's important. I think we did great on the Farm Bill uh, in the Senate as well as the House version. Um, you know, we were able to keep the livestock title out, which has just been uh, kind of a place for, uh, for people to insert their hidden agendas, hidden agendas in the past and really hasn't helped us any. Maintained all of our conservation uh, uh, titles and, and all the, the funding levels uh, for the conservation programs that have really helped our producers in the past few years. And we also uh, maintained a, a good research uh, title there, so which we're in desperate need of keeping up the research and increasing the research, ag research. We're feeling pretty good with the farm bill, but we've also learned that over the over the years you can't count on it till it's done. Uh, at some point in time, we thought it was moving along pretty good. Then all of a sudden, it gets stalled. Then it picks up steam again. Uh, we're just getting reports now that something may be happening and, and coming into play again. Uh, we're optimistic. We're going to be represented day in and day out to make sure our points are, are heard. And I think the thing that we're going to do is, uh, so far, we're, we're pleasantly surprised. Uh, uh, like always, though, I say we're not going to be totally content until we see the, the bill signed and, and delivered and uh, approved. The Farm Bill is a hot topic that's got the attention of people from across the country. Dr. Barry Flinchbaugh, professor of agricultural economics for Kansas State University, also believes quick action needs to be taken to ensure the Farm Bill is finalized before it expires. Well, frankly, I'm appalled at the status that we're at now. Uh, we're in the worst drought we've been in for 60 years. And the Congress of the United States leaves town uh, with no farm bill, no drought assistance. Uh, the Congress is doing to the ag economy what it's been doing to the rest of the economy for several years, just creating more and more uncertainty. 
Um, it's not economic uncertainty, it's political uncertainty. And I made the remark the other day that I was, if I was a member of Congress, I'd be embarrassed to go home under these circumstances. Well, first of all, they should have passed some kind of drought assistance, uh, especially for livestock, because the, uh, the old farm bill, uh, that livestock assistance expired earlier than the rest of the bill. Uh, and we need a farm bill. Uh, the Senate passed a farm bill, a farm bill that'll work. Uh, it's the House that's the problem, and the House is dysfunctional. Uh, in a way, the Senate is too, but the House is more dysfunctional. Uh, God love John Banner. I mean, he has an impossible job. He's got a group of freshmen that have no idea how democracy works. And they just uh, put up roadblocks all the time. And the Farm Bill expires September 30th. It came out of the House Committee, 35 to 11. Uh, Boehner won't put it on the floor because he doesn't have the votes. To learn more about the 2012 Farm Bill, log on to our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. While passing the Farm Bill will be a huge win for the beef industry, overregulation and government intrusion is a continuous battle. New legislation can often have a negative impact on farmers and ranchers. We recently spoke with some members of Congress to get their thoughts on overregulation. We have more in this week's Cattlemen's Capital Concerns. You know, we have had some real challenges with this EPA. I think it's been the most anti-business, anti-agriculture uh, EPA that we've seen. Uh, at least in my lifetime. Some of the regulations that have really concerned me, uh, in particular one of them was the dust regulation that they came out with where they were having conversations about moving to a stricter standard. And Cattlemen's was very helpful uh, on that bill and I really appreciated their support because uh, st uh, what would happen is if they had moved to those kind of standards uh, that they were proposing, uh, we could have potentially seen uh, people that uh, we're combining or driving up and down gravel roads or bailing that if we had a windy day would have to be shut down and, and quit their work. Uh, we could have had uh, many, many states impacted, producers that were impacted. And it just goes to show you that this EPA is out of touch with rural America. The phrase EPA brings fear and trepidation into the farmers and ranchers uh, that I know in Texas. Uh, the EPA seems to be totally first out of control making regulations that don't do anything for the environment, that cost a lot, and hamper uh, the ranching and farming industry. You know, I hear from uh, constituents, uh, ranchers, farmers each and every day about government's overreach, about government intervention, uh, whether it's spilled milk rules dealing with dairies, uh, whether it's barbed wire fence reflectors on, on uh, people's farm ground, it's pretty incredible uh, the areas that government is reaching into. And so, uh, particularly at the EPA, I'm very concerned that a lot of the rules that they're proposing uh, are, 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 you know, not, they just lack common sense. Uh, they're, they're things that we wouldn't come up with in, in rural America because we could do it better. Uh, and uh, that's the message that I try to express to them, whether it's at committee hearings or letters that we write to them, saying, you know, there's got to be a better way to protect the environment, but balance the economic needs and the freedoms that we cherish. It's as if the people who are writing these rules don't understand agriculture at all. So never has uh, the NCBA's input, uh, rancher to congressman, been more important than it is now. We rely so much on the people whose literally boots on the ground experience uh, can be brought to Washington and shed some common sense on this runaway regulatory regime that we're facing. To contact your members of Congress about overregulation or other issues that are important to you, just visit beefusa.org and click on Call to Action. It's the worst drought in 60 years, and it continues to plague most of the United States. About 70% of cattle producing regions are experiencing drought conditions, and that number is continuing to grow. But there is some good news for those being affected. 
The U.S. Department of Agriculture and other federal agencies are using existing authorities to address the hardships arising from the lack of water, feed, and forage. For more information on the available assistance, log on to BeefUSA.org. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We catch all the tortoises and we put them in these fenced areas. That way they got a retirement home forever. The work one of this year's Regional Environmental Stewardship Award winners is doing to protect the land and the wildlife. Plus, a look at the unique pasture-to-plate approach one West Virginia operation is using to boost their business. Stay with us. We'll be right You're back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. There's something wrong. His head is down. He's clearly stressed. He's worried sick about BRD. That's why there's prescription Zactran for BRD treatment and control in high-risk cattle. Get a rapid response plus 10-day treatment and control in a single dose so you can stop worrying and get back to business. For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. Don't worry yourself sick. Talk to your veterinarian about a real alternative for BRD treatment and control. Because it's critical, it's Zactran. From Marielle, a leading animal health company. You're not responsible for the weather, just the cattle. And Rangeland works as hard as you do to deliver performance, production, and profitability. Cattle need consistent nutrition. They'll get it year-round with Rangeland products from Lando Lakes. Deliver what they need free choice in weather-resistant loose minerals and mineral and protein tubs. Get the most out of your forage. See your Lando Lakes co-op for products that will stand up to whatever Mother Nature throws at us. Weather's coming in. Rangeland. Consider it done. At Cabela's Corporate Outfitters, our business is outfitting your business with everything from customized clothing and equipment to great incentives like gift cards and hunting or fishing trips. We carry more than 150,000 products, all backed by Cabela's world-famous commitment to quality and service, along with volume-based pricing for any size business or budget. You trust Cabela's with your outdoor experiences, so rely on Cabela's Corporate Outfitters to build your brand. Visit us today at cabelas.com b2b. Welcome back. Staying successful in this industry sometimes means taking on additional duties. One operation in West Virginia takes pride in its diverse start-to-finish approach to both farming and cattle production. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brad Bulla has more. Flying W Farms, uh, the name Flying W, W from the name Woodworth and fly. My dad was pilot and he flew for USDA and did aerial compliance work and farmed on the side. And we would be the fifth generation, my children would be the fifth generation to be on the farm. A place with deep family roots, Flying W Farms has lofty goals for the quality of its food. In addition to their cow-calf operation, they also sell a wide variety of produce. Depending upon the season would be what produce item that we are in. We're currently into strawberries and marketing those. Flying W Farms prides itself on pasture-to-plate beef production, which Rick markets directly through the farm's store and restaurant. We offer a natural Angus beef product, which is from the calf. Starts as a calf on the farm and gets raised and processed in our commercial processing facility and we offer those beef products, natural angus beef products, to our customers along with other meats. Rick's production methods allow him to keep a close eye on the quality of his cattle from start to finish. So we can maintain a high quality product uh, from calf, starting with the calf, being raised and being weaned, we have control and could manage that individual animal and be able to grow it out and finish it to a choice 
animal, you have a high quality eating experience. So you have that natural Angus uh, on our label and that we could put that on the label and guarantee you a superb eating experience. Rick says another key factor to creating a top quality product is his family's direct involvement with all aspects of the operation. It's very important that my children and family is interested in agriculture. It means a tremendous amount to have them involved in understanding where their food and fiber comes from and where it is produced and what is involved in what they eat every day. We are what we eat. It is a wonderful place to raise a family and have them understand working principles and concepts and that everything doesn't come free on a plate, that there is a cost to everything and to educate them in production agriculture is a tremendous asset. The farm's variety means Rick and his family are constantly shuttling between cattle production and processing, produce harvesting, and running the store and restaurant. But their dedication has earned them a loyal clientele. The weekends are more involved with the customer base and servicing our customer in order that they have a superb eating experience or purchasing and also try to educate our customers on what Flying W Farms is about, what we are producing, how we are producing it, and encouraging them to come back and shop with us again. Flying W Farms is located on the Chesapeake Bay watershed, which means they have to deal with some unique environmental issues. We are a confinement feeding operation. We have constructed a feedlot to minimize the runoff waters that leave our feedlot area in order to be good stewardship and be a good player in with the Chesapeake Bay. Because of issues just like this, Rick says it's important for both large and small producers to become involved in their state and national cattle organizations. A 30 head producer of cattle is still a piece of the pie. They're still part of the organization and it is still very important that those producers are good producers, that they could be educated by funding put forth by NCBA programs such as the quality assurance program, proper injections, proper withholding periods from antibiotics in education. They need educated too because we need every producer to be a quality producer of a quality product for the consumer no matter how big or how small. Rick is optimistic about the industry's future but understands it has challenges. Society and production is changing. Society is becoming more and more demanding of our industry. Whether you are that large producer or small producer putting meat, we are in the cattle production, but we are in the beef business. We are all are producing beef. So no matter the size, large or small, we need to be educated to meet our higher consumer demands for a safe food supply today, tomorrow. Despite all the demands of running an integrated operation, Rick can't imagine doing anything else. I love working with the cattle because I love seeing them grow, being involved, bringing that new calf on, helping that cow that may have difficulty in bringing that new calf and, and seeing it finish out and being able to harvest that animal. It's just a very touching experience to watch nature and, and God's creations uh, be here for us while we're on this earth to be able to produce food and fiber for our nation. Reporting from Flying W Farms in Burlington, West Virginia, I'm Brad Bullock for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To join Rick as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or email us at c2c at beef.org. If you join right now, you'll receive a free 100 milliliter bottle of Dectamax injectable from Pfizer Animal Health. And if you join NCBA as well as your state association, you'll receive a 200 milliliter bottle of Dectamax. 
but you must join both at the same time to get in on this special offer. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Preventing cattle pink eye is as easy as one, two, three. One, vaccinate your animals with Pilligard Pink Eye Tribu to provide pink eye fighting antibodies in the tears that bathe the eye. Broad spectrum protection that cross reacts with 103 different strains of pink eye causing bacteria. Two, stop the flies that spread pink eye bacteria throughout the herd. Apply double barrel VP ear tags and Ultra Boss Pour On for up to five months of face fly and horn fly control. Three, manage the environment to reduce damage to the animal's eye from seed heads, pollen, and UV light, irritants that increase the risk of pink eye infection. With the right tools, preventing pink eye is as easy as one, two, three. When it comes to versatility on your operation, nothing beats a John Deere D-Series skid steer. They're not only great for cleaning and feed chores, but with John Deere Worksite Pro attachments, you can tackle just about any job thrown your way. You asked for versatility, and John Deere delivered. These rock-solid machines are built to last. See your dealer today. Welcome back. Let's head to the western slope of Colorado to visit an award-winning operation that also makes use of federal lands. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Sharon Alseth takes us to the LaValle Ranch where public and private lands meet to create a sustainable operation. When we look across the United States, the western por portion of the United States uh, is primarily federal land, meaning either uh, Bureau of Land Management or Forest Service or Park Service and certainly we work in concert with Forest Service and BLM when we uh, manage the federal lands by doing the right thing with our livestock and the grazing on the federal lands. We'll calve and we'll feed down here at this elevation and then uh, in May and uh, in June we'll move up to higher elevation to some of our uh, BLM allotments, our Bureau of Land Management allotments. Since 1914, the LaValle Ranch in the North Fork Valley has been carefully managing its resources as a cow-calf operation. To keep it sustainable, the LaValle Ranch turned to using BLM land. So we continue to work with the, the Bureau of Land Management and the Forest Service saying that this is an appropriate use of the land and when we manage our cattle right, as, as the majority of the producers uh, do on the federal lands, then uh, that is a sustainable use of, the, of those lands and, and is in concert with managing healthy watersheds. It makes those watersheds healthier and uh, it makes for uh, better vigor of the grasses and the forbs. We send them up there again to take advantage of the nutrition and then that allows us to uh, grow this hay here and this pasture here for, for the cattle when they come back down. The LaValleys also saw the potential for selling their beef locally and created Homestead Meats in a joint venture with six other ranches. The store features prime cuts of beef processed at a locally owned packaging facility. We started a direct marketing business in 1995 where we would sell beef direct to the consumer and started just doing it typical like other producers selling halves and quarters. The six ranches that originally started the uh, Homestead Meats uh, saw it as a way to diversify the, the beef cattle industry. The Homestead Meats business has grown to become a thriving part of the local economy, but that's not where the success of the LaValle Ranch stops. In 2010, the ranch was recognized for excellence in rangeland conservation. We received that award from the Colorado section of the Society for Range Management this past year and it was not only for the work we've done with the BLM but also the work we've done with the uh, NRCS on our private ground and putting in conservation practices. The LaValle Ranch makes the most of any opportunity by helping create homestead meats and using BLM lands to produce a quality product. The ability to uh, work with your family, the ability to know that your family is producing a quality product that, that another family enjoys and puts on their table. It's a very rewarding feeling. Reporting from the LaValle Ranch near Delta, Colorado, I'm Sharon Alseth for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. 
Robbie LaValle is also a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Won't you take a moment to join? Remember, if you join right now, you'll receive a free 100 milliliter bottle of Dectamax injectable from our friends at Pfizer Animal Health. And if you join NCBA as well as your state association, you'll receive a 200 milliliter bottle of Dectamax. But you must join both at the same time in order to get in on this free offer. To join, just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or send us an email at c 2 c at beef.org. Representatives are standing by right now to assist you. Everyone who works in the beef industry deals with daily challenges, but some face a lot more hardships than others due to an illness or injury. Catherine Ernst from the Colorado AgriAbility Project is in the studio with us today to talk about some of the services that are available for those farmers and ranchers who can use just a little extra help. Welcome to the show, Catherine. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a really important project. Tell us a little bit about AgriAbility. So AgriAbility is sponsored by the USDA and consists of the National AgriAbility Project as well as state and regional projects. I represent the Colorado AgriAbility Project and our main goal is to travel the state and help farmers and ranchers who have an injury or an illness continue in production agriculture. Oh, that's outstanding. And, and who specifically is eligible for this type of support? Any sort of farmer or rancher who's in production agriculture as well as someone who has an injury and illness, but they have to have those two criteria in order to be eligible. Very good. And, you know, one question that a lot of people may have is, does the injury have to have occurred on the farm or ranch or in some sort of agricultural area in order to be eligible for this type of support? No, it does not. It can occur anywhere. It could have been something you were born with or an injury that happened outside the farm or on the farm. Very good. So, so as long as you're being inhibited with some sort of injury or illness, uh, you can call and apply. So, so if we have folks watching the show who say, hey, I, I do, I am struggling with something and could use a little extra help, uh, what do they do to, to, to get this help? There's the National AgriAbility Project website that you can go to and there's a map of all 24 states that we are currently serving. Okay. And if you click on the state that you are living in or you have a family member that lives in a different state, you can click on that state and it'll bring you to the contact information for those representatives. Very good. Well, thank you so much for all you're doing for these folks and I hope this has been helpful to some of our viewers. Yes, thank you. For more information on the National AgriAbility Project, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll be right back. When predicting the genetic merit of young Angus cattle, some genomic tests only give you part of the story. For the most complete and dependable evaluation of genetic potential, with more markers and coverage for economically important traits, there's only one genomic test that won't leave Angus breeders in the dark. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out BeefUSA.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at BeefUSA.org. Hi there, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Doc Talk. Each week on Doc Talk, we'll be discussing important issues such as livestock management and welfare, important and new agricultural research, and how to keep our food supply safe. My guests will include nationally and internationally known veterinarians and animal scientists. So if you farm, ranch, or eat, you'll find something of interest in every single episode. Watch Doc Talk every Monday on RFD TV at 4:30 p.m. or online at DocTalkTV.com. Welcome back. The Environmental Stewardship Award Program has been honoring families across the country who demonstrate what it means to take care of their land and the wildlife. E.L. Strickland of Circle Square Ranch is this year's Region 2 winner of the ESAP Award. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Scott Hoke takes us to his ranch in Ocala, Florida to show us how he's being a good environmental steward of the land.
Here's something you don't see every day, grazing land right next to retirement homes. Both the Circle Square Ranch and the nearby neighborhoods are owned by On Top of the World Communities, a real estate company owned by the Colon family. The man responsible for managing the cattle and caring for the ranch is E.L. Strickland, who has called this part of Florida home for his entire life. We're what is known as a cow-calf operation, and we use only two types of bulls. We use uh, Hereford bulls, and we use Bramer bulls. We have uh, one purebred herd of Herefords that we breed the Bramer bulls to get that F1 tiger stripe cattle, which is so popular here in the southeast. Circle Square Ranch raises 1,200 head of cattle on 9,000 acres of land. The nearby residents are proud to have the ranch as their neighbor and consider the cattle part of the community as well. Circle Square Ranch is, uh, is carved out of the middle of a huge uh, a development and they're able to uh, be right across the front, uh, fence from uh, uh, obvious spectators and, and, and multitudes of eyes looking over their shoulder about what they're doing. They like to think the cows are theirs. For instance, I had one lady in one pasture next to their houses. I have to rotate the cows, you know. And uh, she stopped me, she said, where are my cows? I said, I said, I just had to take them to get them something to eat, but they'll be back as soon as the grass grows. The grass is a key component of the ranch's success. Because of the sandy soil, the ranch uses grasses it can support, rather than trying to change the land with lots of soil amendments. In addition, the cattle are rotationally grazed to help preserve and protect the pastures. We fortunately have enough land where we can move them, if no more than just two weeks, move them for two weeks and uh, then rotate them back. It's, uh, it protects the, the, the vegetation and it protects the soil. Part of our rotation is uh, renovation. We call it renovation. We have to reno renovate these pastures every six or seven years. And what we do is uh, we'll get a, put them in peanuts and that way we get all the lime and uh, calcium that we need in the soil for years. And then we'll come back in the winter time and we'll plant winter wheat for grazing. And uh, when the winter wheat's gone, we'll put it back in peanuts for two to three years and it just does a tremendous job. And then we'll go back and put it back in this bahia grass. There's a tremendous root mass under this bahia grass and when we renovated it, it goes back into the soil. We've been renovating some of these pastures over 30 years and they're more productive than the, the newer pastures. Circle Square has no natural surface water sources. Water for the cattle comes from deep wells, while the retirement community supplies storm water and gray water for the crops. An abundance of wildlife calls the ranch home, including many protected and endangered species, such as the scrub jay and the burrowing owl. When we started using uh, wildlife biologists as uh, consultants, you know, first thing, you know, they, they say, well, you know, you got a lot of wildlife. I say, yeah, uh, we've been taking care of them forever. I mean, it's, it's just natural. Each of those uh, listed species out here actually has a very viable um, population and they're doing great. And I really think it's due to EL's management. And I really believe he's found that balance to have a great working landscape with the ranch and also allow the wildlife to have their place as well. The ranch has also set aside 300 acres for gopher tortoises that are displaced due to construction of new homes. Well, we have uh, several areas fenced off when uh, <clears throat> they do do uh, encroachment with development. We catch all the tortoises and we put them in these fenced areas and uh, that way they got a retirement home forever. E.L. has devoted his career to making Circle Square Ranch a thriving cattle operation, while at the same time protecting Florida's native plants and wildlife. In 2008, he was selected Outstanding Rancher by the Florida Cattlemen's Association, and he's always willing to share his knowledge with other ranchers across the state. We want the people around us to understand that we're in the cow business, but we're also environmentalists. Not many people you meet are uh, uh, is, uh, forthright as EL is and is so willing to, to show his operation and show his concerns. I remember in the early days uh, it was kind of a treat to get him to ride me around and show, show me what he was doing. They're the diamond in the rough. Uh, right here in the heart of Central Florida where development uh, is king. If you're going to be in the cattle business and run a ranch, you have to look at everything and protect it. I want to stay here and uh, 
keep at it and uh, I'm going to keep all this wildlife intact and, and these cattle and all this rotation and uh, as long as I can go, I'll be here. We're nowhere near done. It's a, it's a, when I leave this place, however how I leave it, <laughs> it'll be in good shape. For more information about the Environmental Stewardship Award Program or to learn more about past winners, log on to our website at cattlemanthecattleman.org. Don't go away. We'll be right back. They're out there, lurking on your pasture, just waiting to infect your cattle as they graze. Cattle worms cost you money, but a Safeguard strategic deworming program allows you to deworm your cattle and lower worm burdens on your pasture, resulting in improved pregnancy rates and heavier calf weights. Plus, there's a Safeguard form for every operation. So start killing parasites where they lurk. Talk to your animal health provider today about a Safeguard strategic dewormer program. Safeguard, think strategically. Act decisively. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right. Where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family a home cooked meal that's important to me that's important to me and planting the garden and watching it grow Visiting your local farmer's market during the warm summer months is a very relaxing experience. You can pick up a wide variety of fresh produce directly from the producer. And all of that can come together to create something we like to call farmer's market vegetable beef and brown rice salad. And Shanoa French is with us today. She comes to us from the Beef Culinary Innovation Center to tell us how all this comes together. Shanoa, thanks for coming back to the show. Thanks for having me. We're going to um, start with a recipe today that's um, out of the Healthy Beef Cookbook. Sure. And um, that recipe, the Healthy Beef Cookbook was designed to pull some great lean cuts mm -hmm. and some vegetables together and then it has now been used as part of the BOLD study. Well, tell us more about that. We've heard a lot about that at NCBA convention and so forth. Give us some perspective. Well, um, from the culinary part of it, they, we say that the bold diet is the DASH diet, which is yeah. um, a, da a diet that was used to lower sodium and, and um, hypertension in patients, and it's on beef. So we call it the, beef, the DASH diet on beef, is what we're saying. And bold stands for? Beef in an op optimum lean diet. Fantastic. So they, they found that you can use beef in your diet and have the same results without it. So we might as well eat it, right? Something a lot of us have always yes, known, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, what do we, what do we have? Uh, we're, we're using a top round today, is that we right? We are. Okay. So this recipe calls for uh, a pound of top round steak, okay. about an inch thick. And what we're going to do, as you know, top round needs to be marinated. Sure. So we're going to start with the marinade. Um, and then we'll put it in the refrigerator and it needs to be marinated overnight or at least six hours and okay. we'll kind of move through the recipe. Um, this one starts with a little bit of honey. Wow. Um, so we've got about two tablespoons of honey. Yes. And to that we're going to add some fresh lemon juice. All right. And that lemon juice will help break down your honey just a little bit. Gotcha. So in there then you're going to add some olive oil, which is ah. another one of those good, good heart healthy fats. Yes. Yeah. Some um, fresh garlic. Garlic. Minced now garlic. we're talking. I yeah, love absolutely. Garlic. And then here I have some salt and pepper and a little bit of fresh thyme. Oh. And remember, if you um, use fresh thyme, you want to pull it backwards on the stems to get it off the leaves. You've told us that That's before. That's that trick that That's makes right. it real easy to come off. So I'm going to dump it all in there. Fantastic. We'll move these I'm going to mix away. this together. The reason I put it in this little dish is mm -hmm. you need to pull a quarter of a cup out, um, and that's going to be used for the marinade, and then the rest of it is the dressing for the next day. Oh, I see. So yeah, I'm going to pull it into one of these little measuring cups okay. and get a total on it. Yeah, that honey kind of kind of sticks in the bottom of there. In. Yeah, Is that fantastic. Just out of the way, and it looks like we have just about a half cup. So I'm okay. gonna get rid of about half of this. Very good. We'll go into here. Good. And we'll pull and the rest. The rest becomes a dressing. Rest fantastic. becomes a dressing. So oh. what you'll do is um, throw your steak in. Oh, yeah. It's easiest to use a Ziploc. Sure. Um, I'm gonna pull these guys off real quick. Um, seal your air out. Yeah. 
Zip it shut. Yeah, and make sure you get a good toss. I see. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you think about it, you put it in there the night before, toss it the next morning before you leave for work. Gotcha. Um, gets a good... But about 12 uh, hours or so. Yeah, at least overnight, so okay, whatever works. So this would go in the refrigerator, in the refrigerator. as right. well as the rest of your marinade for tomorrow. Very good. So we're going to get these out of the way. Yep. And we're going to move on to the main components here All right. of this We've dish. Got some asparagus going. Yeah, so asparagus and um, yellow zucchini or yellow squash. Mm -hmm. You can use, if you need to switch out your vegetables, like you said, if you visit your local farmer's market sure. and they don't have asparagus, find something else. Just make sure you stick within the same family of vegetables because okay. if you get something with more, much more liquid, it'll change your consistency. I see. So um, a squash and about a cup of um, asparagus in here. Gotcha. You'll give them a nice heat, just brown them a little bit so they start to cook and, and kind of break down. Yep. To that, we're going to add three cups of brown rice. I see. Um, you can either make it from scratch at home sure. you can buy the frozen kind frozen kind um, good. microwave kind whatever yeah, works just sure. make sure that it's hot because okay. otherwise it'll change how long your dish takes to cook gotcha. so three cups in the here and yeah. i'm going to mix it all into one big skillet all if right. you don't have a skillet that's large enough to mix everything into the skillet yes. um, you can cook your vegetables and then put everything into a mixing bowl i, see. I don't like dirtying extra dishes so that's yeah so also yeah, there's a, a cup of um Diced tomato, we have de-seeded these, oh. so cut them in half and kind of pull all those wet, moist seeds out of gotcha. them. Get rid of them, it makes things a little neater in here. Gotcha. That goes it's in. colorful. Yes. Um, a cup of uh, garbanzo beans. Garbanzo beans, Yeah, so Very this good. is the stuff that starts to make hummus, if you're okay. not familiar with those. Sure. Um, these are canned, just drain them. And some basil. And some basil, fresh cut basil, um, about a quarter of a cup. Mm -hmm. Give Look that a that. nice, nice toss in there. Yeah. And then, um, left over out of the refrigerator comes that oh, dressing. Fantastic. So the yeah. dressing gets tossed in there. Okay, gotcha. So you don't wait till the end of the I mean are you doing this this right now? At, yeah, at so this would well you put your you put your steak in the night before gotcha. and this would be the day you're the ready day to you're serve doing. that. Perfect. So yep. that leftover marinade came out of there. All right. Um, go ahead and give this a good toss. That looks great. Look how colorful yeah. that is. So now is here comes the hero. What what you've done with the beef. Absolutely. Is, it's gone out of the refrigerator. And um, onto a broiler pan. Oh, So okay. I, I'm not sure how familiar. Um, if you want to use this on the grill, you could do that too because we are in the summertime. Sure. But the difference between broiling and grilling is basically just the location of your heating element. Oh. So when you're using a broiler, um, it's the very top two to three inches of your oven. Gotcha. And there's real hot heat coming down. down right? Make sure you use a broiler pan and sure. the big trick with that is is that there's a pan oh, underneath. Line yep. We line it with foil so it's easy clean up yep. and then the steak goes right on top. Looks good to me. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this off and you do know. some slices. Fantastic. And you'll just slice, slice this across the grain. Yes. Um, Look at that. Nice and a nice medium rare. As thick as you want if you yes. um, have Smaller kids and that kind of stuff, and you want to cut it in half this way first Just so your pieces are shorter, yeah. um, you can do that. But go wow. ahead and cut this whole steak yeah. all the way across, and then you're mm. going to either fan it across, yeah. or what we've done here for individual portion Doesn't sizes. Doesn't that look great? Is we've done the portion size of the um, rice and vegetable mix underneath, and then your four ounces of lean beef on the top. And what we've talked about is this is part of the bold diet, yes. and the my plate, which yeah. have all kind of been put together. So this gives you your half of your plate of fruit and vegetables, a quarter of your grains yeah. and then a quarter of your proteins and then they top it off with your dairy. So this is a my plate meal and part of the bold study all at once. You've got it all covered. Absolutely. You don't have to sacrifice a great tasting dish to also be taking care of your health. Absolutely. Thanks so much for coming. This looks delicious. Thanks. To get recipes like this and, and, and more, head to our website at cattleman cattleman.org. I'm an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because I think uh, as an advocacy group, NCBA has done some great things for our industry and I kind of feel compelled to, to give back some of what they've done for us. I'm an NCBA member because it's the organization that stands up to, for the industry that I love and will allow my family to continue and to be a part of this great industry. Because this organization is looking out for cattle producers. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA doesn't pick and choose what issues it works on. It works on every issue, every day, on behalf of all the cattlemen across the country. They understand what makes our cow-calf business profitable. Join me and thousands of other cattlemen across the country. Join me today. Join me today. 
Join NCBA today and receive a new member gift while supplies last. Head to BeefUSA.org and enter the promo code C2C or call 866-USA-BEEF and mention C2C. Sometimes you feel like a block and sometimes you don't. That's why Sweet Licks gives you a choice. In the bag, in the block, or in the tub. And Sweet Licks offers a complete line of vitamin, mineral, protein, and medicated nutritional supplements in the form you want to satisfy even the most discriminating domestic livestock, even the gourmet goat or the finicky fowl or the connoisseur cow. For information, 187 Sweet Licks. Profitability never tasted so sweet. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Travelers over the Great Plains in the days before convenience stores were forced to use dried cow chips or even buffalo chips for fuel to cook over. See, wood was scarce and sagebrush was hard to light, but poop was plentiful. But I've been a little uneasy about cooking beef over their own cow pies. I mean, it just just doesn't seem right somehow. There's something that strikes me as ironic. It borders on being abuse, and that's cooking steaks on a cow chip fire. It's like stewing you in your own juice. I'm not sure where we got the idea. I can think of no other case where a creature is finally rewarded with such a backhanded slap in the face. I mean, even cavemen were more sympathetic. There's no record they cooked on a stool. As much as a mastodon munches, couldn't have been lack of fuel. I'm a great fan of barbecued chicken. I savor and flavor the taste. But I don't think I'd be quite so eager were it cooked over dried poultry waste. And as much as I like country spare ribs, I think that I might hesitate were they grilled over porcine torpedoes from under the farrowing crate. There are chips of all kinds in abundance, from poker to micro to monk. Yet the cow stands alone as a victim to be fricasseed over a punk. We can blame it all on the Indians or custom or westward migration, but putting yourself in a cow's place, that's really not much consolation. Put this whole thing in perspective, a comparable likeness would be cremating my cowboy carcass on a pile of these poems wrote by me. This is Baxter Black. From out there. Thanks Baxter for those culinary insights. We'll be right back. It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattlemen is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. From Capitol Hill to the far side of cattle country, the National Cattlemen provides information NCBA members need. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattlemen. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. I'm Kevin Oxter, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Join me Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. This week's legacy photos come from the Region 2 winner of this year's Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's take a look.
To submit your favorite farm or ranch photo, just visit our website at cattlemanthecattleman.org. Next week on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, how a program called Progressive Beef is helping one Kansas operation meet consumer demand. Plus, the Region 3 winner of the Environmental Stewardship Award and the week's news and market headlines. Well, that does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I hope to see you back here next week right here on RFD-TV.